It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Bradley University's Assistant Athletic Director of Fan Engagement and Marketing, Karen Carthy. How are you doing today? Good, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you got started in the sports business world? So I got started in sports right after I graduated college from Norfolk State University. Um, the semester before I graduated, actually the summer before, um, I did an internship with the tennis coach there. And I realized that there were people who worked behind the scenes making athletics go. I was always a sports fan, but I didn't, it didn't dawn on me that there were a lot of people who made things happen that you didn't see at the games. So that was definitely intriguing to me in doing the internship with my tennis coach. I got a, fell in love with athletics or the behind the scenes part of it. And that's how I got in. As soon as I graduated, I ended up working with our development office and then went into sports information and have been in ever since. Can you talk about your experience at Gamble State University as the assistant athletic director for media? Okay, actually Grambling State, but um, that was a great experience. Um, I was there for two and a half years, um, got to do so many fun things. I had never been that far south or west before. It was in, it's in Louisiana. Um, so getting to learn the culture, loving the food, um, learning the rich tradition and history that Grambling State had, it was just an amazing experience. I got to do some really great things there. I uh, got to meet some amazing athletes and just had a really good time. Can you talk about your experience at South Carolina State as the director of marketing? Uh, that too was a great experience. Um, at that point, that was the furthest south I had been. I was right before Grambling. Um, but it was really great to go there as well. They played in the same conference uh, as Norfolk State where I went to school. So I was familiar with the university, had a lot of friends working there. And it was just a great time. Um, I haphazardly got to be the marketing director because uh, a couple months after I got there, they uh, had to, we had budget cuts and had to let go of the current marketing director. And I ended up kind of getting his responsibilities and I was able to do some great things there, had great interns working with me and we were able to make a difference. Can you talk about what a marketing director does? So for college athletics, a marketing director um, has several responsibilities. They're in charge of promoting the sports that they're assigned with um, over usually game day experience. Um, when you're in a facility on game day, they're in charge of basically everything you see or hear that isn't the actual game. So things on the video board, presentations on the field or the court, everything the PA announcer says. Um, so that's like the game day part of it. And then they're also in charge of, you know, doing actual marketing, promoting the sports in advance, planning um, promotional days, executing um, sponsor activations and like the whole nine. So anything that deals with revenue generation and just honoring people, just everything promoting on the court is what some of the things that marketing directors deal with. Can you talk about the day-to-day -day as a fan engagement? So day-to-day -day for fan engagement um, usually is me calling groups to get them to attend games, um, reaching out to our community members, community groups, youth groups, whoever, um, staying engaged with those individuals so that they can you know, come to our games. And again, this is life before COVID when people could actually attend things, but um, you know, staying engaged with, with the individuals in our community and then kind of working with the athletic staff to make sure that the fans game day experience is up to par. So the um, concession stands, you know, have what the people need, the facilities are working, elevators, bathrooms, you know, stairways and everything is just in order so that when people come in, they can have a great experience and ultimately come back to our events. Can you talk about, of course, with COVID, how has things changed with the fan 
engagement now than what it was like this time last year? So here in Illinois, we actually can't have any fans at our indoor events. Um, outdoor, I think we're limited to 20% capacity, but we didn't play sports in the fall. So we haven't, had, we haven't even had any events yet. But um, everything that we do now, we're trying to do virtual. Um, it's changed to basically a virtual setting. Um, we had a virtual 5K back in October. We did virtual trivia night. Um, we did a few other things, but again, everything's been virtual. So we're preparing for basketball in person, but we won't have any fans. So again, everything that we're doing from a marketing and fan engagement perspective um, is virtual. We're making sure that our fans can see our games on ESPN Plus or the different uh, channels and just making sure that that virtual streaming experience is up to par for what we normally put out for an in-person experience. When it comes to the virtual side for basketball, of course, are you doing more of like how the NBA did where they have like the video boards of like the fans? Right, yes. Yeah. So we're actually getting ready to release um, the fan cams that we're going to request. So we're going to allow the Bradley fans to submit starting lineups and videos of themselves doing our cheers, um, national anthem singers, and a few other things. Um, but we're getting ready to launch that, um, I think, for our conference season. So we will still try to engage with our fans and then have them, you know, be represented in venue at our events. Can you talk about serving on the South Carolina Southern Athletic um, Hall of Fame? So yeah, while I was at South Carolina State, one of the things I got to do that was really awesome was be a part of the Hall of Fame committee. Um, that was fun because, you know, we got to review all the great accomplishments of the nominees. And then, you know, we got to put a put together an event for them and then we got to meet them. So I got to meet, you know, the people who made history just in the sports world you know a living breathing you know trailblazer and we worked with him often on so many of our events and it was just amazing to serve in that capacity can you talk about like the requirements of what it takes to of course be in an athletic hall of fame um so they vary from you know school to school. Everybody has their own requirements, but more generally, you have to have made um, a significant contribution on the field or on the court. So you know, stats-wise, you had to be the best. Um, you've had to. Most people have an academic. We have to have graduated um, in most cases. Uh, I know that's where some people come in contention, where they have a really great athlete, but they haven't graduated, so they may not be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, but you have to. Let's see, so athletic accomplishment, you had to be in good academic standing or graduated. Um, and then you had to be good in community service or, you know, be an asset to the campus community. Because I know that was big on a lot of the um, nominations that we had looked over. Some people were really good in, in the classroom, really good on the court, but they didn't have any community service and didn't do anything for the community. And, you know, their, their um, applications may have been pushed back and other people kind of moved ahead of them based on their community service. So those are the three big things that they look for in terms of Hall of Fame selections. Can you talk about, of course, like I know, like let's say if a player is like has an amazing career now, how long does it take for them to be inducted? Of course, they have to graduate, but like after they graduate, how long after they graduate would they be inducted? Um, some school, again, it varies school by school. I know at South Carolina State, you had to be removed for at least five years. So some schools vary. Um, as soon as you graduate, you can get in. But I know most people have a waiting period of between two to five years. What are some of your future plans whenever it comes to the marketing side of directing of marketing? Um, Honestly, just to get back on the court in the field and just, you know, be, have our student athletes be able to play. Um, I know like preparing for basketball is going to be so different because, again, my job is to cater to fans. We're not going to have any fans. So at this point, I'm going to be catering to our student athletes and, you know, playing the music they want to hear and, you know, doing things specifically for them. But I'm really just ready to get back 
in the building and see some live sports and, you know, be able to kind of put my spin on whatever we have going on. What did you know now that you didn't know before you started being a um, director of marketing? So, and this, this one is kind of funny, but weird, but one thing I had never thought about was the logistics that went into a flyover. You know, you go to football games or you go to outside or outdoor events and, you know, you have the flyovers by the, you know, Air Force, whoever, different groups. And I never thought about the logistics that went into them until I had to do one. And, you know, it's a lot of timing and planning and organizing and communicating and synchronizing. And, you know, it has to be extremely precise. And most people don't think about all those things, you know, when they see one. So that was one thing that I didn't know, wasn't, didn't have any experience in prior to being a director of marketing. What did you know now that you didn't know before you started as a fan engagement? So in terms of fan engagement, one thing that I got better at or I got more expertise in was catering to the different groups that attend the game. So at any given time, you know, you have young adults, older adults, you got senior citizens, you got little kids, you got college students, and all those people are in the venue at one time, and you have to make sure that each of them has a good Well, yeah what what did you know what advice would you give upcoming future directors of marketing and fan engagement so anyone interested in getting into this field i would tell them to volunteer or you know sign up to work in it uh, especially for kids in school so athletic departments always need help especially on game days so you know go to your local athletic department go find your marketing director uh, if you can sign up for work study or if it's just a volunteer opportunity get your feet wet that way get in the door um, if there are other opportunities that you can sign up for, please do. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions because asking questions is how you learn and how you get more information. And then finally, understand that it's hard work and the days are going to be long and, you know, sports happen as entertainment. So on nights and weekends when people can consume that. So you know that your days are going to be long, your weekends might be gone. But, you know, it's hard work that is extremely rewarding if you're really into it. Thank you again, Catherine, for your interview, and best of luck at Bradley University as the Director of Marketing and Fan Engagement. Thank you, Brandon. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? So on Twitter, I am KMC the Marketer. So KMC the Marketer on Instagram and Snapchat, KMC the Writer. Thank you again, Catherine, for your interview, and best of luck in Bradley's University Director of Marketing. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Catherine, for your interview and best of luck. Bye. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.